Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the podcast. It is time for the Daily Dive for October 21st, 2024. And we start with a case that I talked about probably six months ago, something like that maybe, maybe longer. And it's about the original Romeo and Juliet, the OG 1968 version. And today a judge dismissed a second lawsuit over the bedroom scene in the movie finding that the lead actors did consent to their appearance in the film. So actors Olivia Hussey and Leonard Whiting were 16 and 17 at the time of the filming, and they first sued Paramount way back in December of 2022. That didn't really go anywhere, but they said that they were duped by the director, Franco Zeffirelli, into appearing in the nude, because the scene includes kind of a, a lingering shot of Leonard's butt and a glimpse of Olivia's naked breasts, 16 and 17. But the original lawsuit was thrown out in May 2023, mostly because of statute limitations. So then the actors filed a new lawsuit in February 2024 because they said, you know, Criterion re-released it. So with a digital restoration, so it triggers a new statute of limitations. But the judge dismissed the claim today. Says it's not different enough to warrant revisiting the earlier ruling. A comparison of the 2023 release with the prior versions shows no significant visible improvement in the film, particularly in the bedroom scene, to the naked eye. The actors did argue that it was child porn, but the judge said no. It's not sufficiently sexually suggestive to meet that definition. And she said that the producers had contracts with both actors indicating that they consented to participate in the film. And even in the absence of express consent... Plaintiff's subsequent conduct in the decades that follows since the film's original 1968 release speaks to plaintiff's implied ratification and approval of the film, including the bedroom scene. This includes, among others, appearances and statements made by plaintiffs during interviews and attendance at film festivals, during which plaintiffs did not object to the continuing release and distribution of the successive releases of the film. I mean, <clears throat> it, was, it was huge, right? Cast teenagers in the lead roles. It was nominated for four Academy Awards, one, two, one for cinematography, one for costume design. But Olivia said that she and Whiting were each paid about $2,000. That was all they ever received. They didn't have an acting career after that. And she said, you know, everyone says you must be so well off. You were in a classic. And we say, no, we didn't get paid for that. We got minimum. We were always broke. I felt exploited. Really looking back on all that, Leonard and I, we felt exploited throughout. But for years, they, you know, defended the film, including the nude scene. But Olivia said, oh, you know, we'd say it. Oh, it was art. Everybody does nudity. No big deal. But really deep down, my mom knew and my close friends knew it was traumatic. It wasn't something I ever agreed to do. I just did it because I felt like I couldn't say no. And Leonard, too. And Olivia's mother wasn't on set. She only found out about the nude scene after the film was completed. And Whiting said he wasn't mentally prepared to film in the nude. And he's very uncomfortable. And I believe the scene didn't require nudity due to the fact that we were both underage. Olivia was very, very nervous and frightened as well, but we were really very fond of each other, and we helped each other get through the whole thing. And, you know, it's just paramount throughout the lawsuit, and th their attorney says they're going to appeal. I just, I don't, I don't see much luck at all. Do I think they're exploited? Yeah. All right. There are seven new Sean Combs lawsuits, okay? This is my thing about this one, the main one. There's one that claims other celebrities were involved in an alleged attack. Now, remember, Tony Busby promised us October 1st and is now October 21st that he was going to name names. We still don't have names. And I know he came out and said, oh, a lot of celebrities have settled with us, so that way we won't file a lawsuit against them. Okay. And then I see everybody online going, well, these people must have settled with him, which is why he doesn't mention them. It doesn't work that way. Okay? It doesn't work that way. Now, this is two of Combs' accusers in the most recent lawsuits claimed they were minors when they were allegedly drugged and raped by Sean Combs. This is the first time other celebrities have been mentioned as participants in the legal filing, but they're not called out by name. Okay. Combs and an unnamed male celebrity allegedly raped a girl while a female celebrity watched. Okay. Jane Doe claims she was 13 when she was sexually assaulted by Sean Combs and another male celebrity. Okay? It allegedly occurred on September 7th, 2000. That's when Sean Combs was still dating Jennifer Lopez. When she unsuccessfully tried to attend the MTV Video Music Awards. 13. 
She couldn't get a ticket inside the award show. She claims a driver who worked for Combs invited her to an after party. She signed an NDA, which wouldn't be valid when you're 13. Combs aggressively approached plaintiff with a crazed look in his eyes, grabbed her and said, you are ready to party. She said she had one drink, but then was feeling woozy and lightheaded. She lay down in a bedroom, and soon after, Combs entered with a male and female celebrity. She says she was first raped by the male celebrity as Combs and the unidentified female watched. Then she claimed she was raped by Combs as the other two stars looked on. Okay. This is my problem with this. Okay? Busby can make all the deals he wants with other celebrities. Tell me how this case is going to progress. Okay? Just tell me how it's going to progress. You have a woman. She's going to say, I was raped by this celebrity. Okay, how come they're not named? Because what's going to happen in this civil lawsuit? You're going to have to depose this male celebrity. You can't ignore it. Even if, and it didn't happen, but let in the sense that Busby didn't make a deal with the male A-list celebrity. He didn't. Because what's Sean Combs going to do? It, let's say Busby made a deal with some male A-list celebrity who, oh yeah, you know, I raped this girl. Okay. You got paid, right? Okay. Well, Sean Combs is going to want to depose this A-list celebrity so he can talk about that night. So how's this A-list celebrity supposed to stay out of the limelight? How's the female who apparently just watched? We don't know how old the girl is. We need to know, right? Because what Sean Combs' attorneys are going to want to say and ask this female celebrity, do you know how old this girl was? No, I have no idea. Did she look? I don't remember. Okay. Did she look drunk? I don't remember. It's these kind of questions. Even they say, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. This person's going to have to be named. Why aren't they named in the lawsuit? Is Busby just trying to get money from the male and female celebrity and then is going to dismiss it? Because you cannot continue this lawsuit without the names becoming known. It's impossible. It is literally impossible. So I don't understand. I, he, he could take the money from the male and female celebrity and then dismiss it. But then why did you file it in the first place? Just take the money, boom. Because now it's at issue. I don't know if Sean Combs has been served I'm assuming he probably has. <clears throat> it's not like there's going to be any progress on any of this while the criminal stuff is happening. But this lawsuit makes no sense. Zero. If we want to advance any of this, then we have to name the other names. It just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work logically. At all. And... So she recognized, obviously, she's 13 years old. She recognizes this male celebrity and this female celebrity. You don't think Sean Combs' people are going to want to depose her? Okay, well, who was the celebrity? You know? And did they know how to, you just basic questions. You got to name names. It's different. She can be Jane Doe. Got it. She's a victim. But the female celebrity... And the male celebrity are not victims. It, the male celebrity is the one who raped her first. <clears throat> you just can't. It's so frustrating. And I don't know if Busby's just doing it for, for clicks or attention. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, his attorney said Mr. Combs and his legal team have full confidence in the facts, their legal offenses, and the integrity of the judicial process. In court, the truth will prevail that Mr. Combs has never sexually assaulted anyone, adult or minor, man or woman. I mean, do I think that he sexually assaulted people? Of course. Do I think that he sexually assaulted this girl? I don't know. Maybe. But I do know that this lawsuit is, is BS without naming the names. It just, it can't happen. It literally can't happen. If he if he's made some kind of deal with these celebrities that their names aren't, what lawyer said, oh, yeah, that sounds like a deal. You know, she's not going to ask us for any money. Fine. You know, you got paid off. They're still going to name her. 
they're still going to name the, the male celebrity and the female celebrity because it's going to come out. They're not going to be deposed under seal. One of the anonymous accusers and a different one is a personal trainer who alleged he was drugged and passed around like a party favor for Combs' sexual enjoyment. Okay, again, I gotcha. I gotcha. Party favor for Combs' guest sexual enjoyment. And who are the other guests? Who are the ones that did it? Can you name any of them? You know, was Sean Combs one of the people who he just facilitated it? Supposedly occurred after Sean Combs was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award of the BET Awards in June 2022. That one's not that long ago. A 17-year-old aspiring singer alleged he was drugged and fondled by Combs during a New York City hotel penthouse party in 2022. Okay, fair enough. That one's okay. A third man, identified as a Los Angeles area businessman, alleged he was sexually assaulted during a promotional event for Combs' liquor brand um, in 2022. One woman claimed she was raped by Combs in 2014. Okay, I'm okay with all of those. <clears throat> it's the, the par- passing of the party favor and then the other one with the celebrity. But what are the headlines? The headlines are, oh, an A-list celebrity. You're, you know, a celebrity, a female and a male. It's clicks. It's clicks. It's, it's like the bottles of baby oil. And perhaps there's somebody in this, you know, universe on YouTube or whatever that talks about it in a logical way and saying this is not possible. Not that the assaults didn't happen, but you can't just have anonymous people that did this to somebody and not have their names come out. And why doesn't Busby name their names? Why doesn't he do it? He said that they did all their fact checking. Then name the damn names. Put them out there. Okay. Liam Payne. We got some toxicology test results. Apparently he had multiple substances in his system including pink cocaine, which is not cocaine. It's just a little too see. We don't know what this particular mix. Usually it's like meth and ketamine, MDMA and stuff. But he also had cocaine in the system, benzos and crack. And the body's going to remain in Argentina until the autopsy is complete. And if you think about pink cocaine, think about Scott Storch. It's what, you know, he spent all his money on and women. And, you know, then there's this video of Liam talking about Sean Combs to put it all together. And it was when Liam was on the Graham Norton show. It was an episode with Salma Hayek, David Williams, Ed Westwick was on it, I think. It was back in May of 2017. And basically, Liam said, you know, I, I had this meeting, I had this awkward thing with, with P. Diddy. I went over to say hello to P. Diddy. Jay-Z was there. Leonardo DiCaprio was sat. And he goes, um, so I went over there and I thought I was trying to think, who's the easy target in the scenario? Who's the one that you go to say hello? And I'm thinking, I saw him and get him to the Greek. I'm going to go over there and say hello to him. So I thought, P. Diddy. So I went out to shake his hand. I shook his hand and just say, oh, nice to meet you. And he's just going, he, 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 he. But with the longest handshake ever, and I'm just like sitting there looking to his eyes, like, when is this going to end? And then the worst of it happened. The worst of it happened. There was a whole thing with Jay-Z. And I went to lean in to speak to him, but you can't lean in to speak to Jay-Z. You're not allowed to lean in. And his bodyguard just like shoved me and I went flying across the room. And I was like, right, I'm just going to go and sit over here with Ellie Goulding now. Thank you. That's enough. And a very awkward moment. Shirley MacLaine, it's book time. She's got a new book, The Wall of Life, Pictures and Stories from the Marvelous Lifetime. And she talked about this encounter that she had with Morgan Freeman. And in, in the book, she says, you know, I propositioned him and he turned me down. But in an interview, she said, oh, I really liked him right away. I thought his acting was brilliant. I barely said anything. And he just shook his head. Isn't that interesting? And she talks about all the other people that she worked with, Jack Nicholson, Elvis Presley. And she said, you know, Jack, he just made me laugh all the time. He was one of my favorite people. I never felt anything romantic toward him. I don't think he would have been my type to have an affair with anyway. I would laugh too much. And she said that she um, had an open relationship with her husband, Steve Parker. They were married for almost 30 years. So she could have relationships with any others that she wanted. And she said that she had a relationship with Danny Kay. Okay, well, Lucille Ball, you know, Desi said that Danny was gay. Robert Mitchum, we know from Lucy and Desi that that probably involved some backdoor stuff. And also politician Andrew Peacock. 
It is going to be a marvelous, marvelous book. Well, the Olivia Nuzzy New York Magazine saga has come to an end. They announced on Monday that New York Magazine did that it parted ways with Olivia, and despite both insisting she did nothing wrong. Last month, the magazine enlisted the law firm Davis Wright Tremaine to review Olivia Nuzzy's work during the 2024 campaign. They reached the same conclusion as the magazine's initial internal review of her published work, finding no inaccuracies nor evidence of bias. Nevertheless, the magazine and Nuzzy agree the best course forward is to part ways. She's a uniquely talented writer, and we have been proud to publish her work over her nearly eight years as our Washington correspondent. We wish her the very best. I feel like the National Enquirer should run with this. They should come up with some kind of headline. There's a secret love child of Lisa Marie Presley, a secret grandchild of Elvis and Priscilla living in Florida. Do you remember when Priscilla sued her former business partner back in July for like a million bucks, claimed elder abuse? Okay. Well, Brigitte Cruz is the person now is being sued, the defendant. And basically, she amended her complaint and said this, Presley still has deep personal ties to Florida. Her late daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, lived in Florida in addition to a grandchild the grandchild of Elvis and Presley, who still resides in Florida today. Okay, so that means Lisa had a secret child in addition to the four children the public knows about, right? That's what it has to be. It's just kind of, where did this child come from? Now, maybe, you know, Brigitte got her facts wrong, but if you think about it, they're trying to establish the fact that Priscilla needs to, says she doesn't have connections in Florida, and they're saying, yes, she does, that she would visit the Florida on a frequent basis and that Presley was shopping for a permanent home in the Palm Beach area, that her belongings be moved to Florida, and that she had been to Florida repeatedly in the year before the complaint was originally filed and continues to visit on a frequent basis. It has to be a secret child. Why? Well, because the lawsuit mentions Riley. But the lawsuit, the way it's written, is they're talking about a grandchild that's not Riley. And Harper and Finley live with Michael Lockwood in California. That means there's an unknown child who lives in Florida. Okay, let's find out about it. Well, Ariana felt the backlash, backlash from Elvira and <clears throat> has apologized. I'm so disheartened to see this. I actually don't even remember getting the chance to meet you because I had an anxiety attack and to my memory left before the rest of my family. This was around seven years ago, and at the time, I was really not great with being in public crowds or loud places. But if I'm misremembering this moment, I sincerely apologize for offending you so. Thank you for being so nice to my mom. She told me how lovely you were. She might have different feelings about that now, but I'll talk to her. <laughs> Clearly, we all have our days. Sending love always. You'll always be our queen of Halloween. It kind of feels like a apology, not apology. She might have different feelings about that now. Why? Because Elvira called you out? All right, the blind items revealed from yesterday. Number one was from October 10th. The former housewife is all in on that endorsement deal, even though she knows that we know she is the weekly shot to lose the weight. That's Candy Barras, Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Hydroxycut. Number two is from October 10th. The TV psychiatrist is looking for a state where he can win a race for governor. That is Dr. Phil. Number three is from October 11th. The tennis player and the married foreign-born superhero seem to be together everywhere. Um, as of late, and that is Emma Raducanu and Benedict Cumberbatch. Number four is from October 11th. The singer slash producer from a one name group has been in this space before about his version of the music Casting Couch. So it isn't a shocker he's being included in the producer slash wannabe rapper Takedown. And that's Devante Swing, Jodeci, and Sean Combs. From today, number one's from October 3rd. The pint-sized comic actor knows he's on film at the parties of the producer slash wannabe rapper. So why is he pretending he has never been to one or hosted some? He acts like he never met the guy before. He should tell his wife now and not have the thing like the car thing before where he lied at first and had to confess afterwards. That's Kevin Hart and Sean Combs. Number two's from October 9th. So the NFL player that hooked up with a married former a list rapper while she was pregnant is now being accused of sexually assaulting men. And that's Stefan Diggs and Cardi B. Number three is from October 10th. The A-list comic slash host who is up to his eyebrows and his daughter's eyebrows with the producer slash wannabe rapper. Now we find out he was jealous of someone funnier and that guy ended up dead. That's Steve Harvey, Lori Harvey, Sean Combs, and Bernie Mac. 
Number four is from October 11th. This former A-list singer turned judge just can't admit that no one's willing to pay big bucks to see her go out on tour solo. And that's Paul Abdul. Number five is from October 11th. This A-list celebrity says she doesn't want to see any more curvy models on catwalks. She says it is ruining the industry. And that is Anna Wintour. And that is it for this one, you guys. I will talk to you 